Uh, hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us uh, in the next uh, in this in this new session of Reinforcement Learning Reading Club. Uh, our presenter today is uh, Nushaba Chima. Uh, he's uh, doing her PhD at uh, Max Planck Institute at uh, Germany, and she is also a researcher at uh, German uh, Research Center of AI. So, Nushaba, we can begin. Okay, thank you, I mean, So today I present Collaborating with Humans Without Human Data, which was a New York Spotlight paper in 2021. Um, so it's essentially the motivation between um, of this, sorry, one moment, I need to, um, I need to, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, so the motivation of this paper was essentially can model free reinforcement learning which wasn't trained on any data generated agents that, that can collaborate with novel, novel humans. Um, for this, um, they used a common payoff game, um, essentially an overcooked clone that they used as a setting for zero shot coordination with other partners. So with agents, with other agents, and other humans, and also evaluated their results um, with human players and asked by asking them like which one, what kind of strategy they preferred. So their main contributions are essentially that they introduce a training strategy called fictitious scope play for zero shot coordination. And they demonstrate that FCP can generalize better than self-play, population play, and behavioral cloning play, which I will explain in a bit. Um, then they also show that FCP significantly outperforms BCP, which was state of the art at, at the time, um, in task score and also human partner preference. So um, essentially self-play means um, that the agent learns by only interacting with, it, with itself, right? So it's playing all the game alone. And then population play here means that they are co-training together through random pairing, essentially by doing multi-agent reinforcement learning. And then finally, behavioral uh, clone, uh, behavioral cloning play is when your when the partner agent is trained on human data and the other RL, RL agent is trained based based on based on the based on that like training like trying to. Um, coordinate with that with the other agent which is trained on human data and finally um, fictitious scope play so fictitious scope play um, is um, is a training setting we will I mean it's a training method um, divided into two steps so the first step is a diverse partner collection so they do that via um, self play which they um, so they take a bunch of uh, agents trained with self play um, but then save them at different checkpoints and then what they do is they take another agent, so their FCP agent, which is then trained um, on that diverse, diverse partner pool. So the partner parameters are frozen. And the motivation of FCP was essentially that um, your, uh, when it comes to this common payoff game, your partner should be able to deal with symmetries. So, for example, if if your partner, like if your partner is, uh, or if you're try, if you're the agent, you're trying to avoid your partner, um, you can either go left or right. So, uh, which are both um, valid strategies, but um, the agent should be adaptable to the human partner, like for whichever strategy they, they choose, and that uh, and the agent should be able to deal with variations in skill levels. So a good training partner, uh, a training, uh, so, 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 so a good agent um, should be able to assist um, players that are skilled and non-skilled. And so they argue that self-play helps with the first motivation. So essentially by playing on, on their own, um, they, are, they argue that they are able to find um, uh, better like symmetry breaking strategies. And um, of course, the different checkpoints represent different, different skill levels. Um, here you can see an overview of the environment. Um, so this is um, essentially an overcooked clone. Um, they divide, uh, so they use five layouts. Um, here you can see them. And the goal of the game is that both players together uh, deliver as many dishes as possible. Um, they used a population size of uh, 32 agents for each baseline and for each ablation, so um, uh, so which were all, all uniformly sampled. For the FCP version, they used three checkpoints. So essentially, um, one uh, a checkpoint at the beginning, which represents a beginner level player, a checkpoint in the middle, which represents an intermediate player, 
and a checkpoint in the end, which represents um, a fully skilled player. Um, again, and as mentioned before, the baselines are um, self-play, population play, and um, behavioral cloning play. They also did some ablations where they used um, for FCP no-pass checkpoints and also an additional architecture variation. Um, so where they, for example, didn't use an LSTM in their architecture or to change the parameters from 16 to 265. For each of these variations, they used, um, they, I mean, they sampled eight, uh, eight, eight agents. Um, so in total, they still had a baseline of 32 agents. And finally, they didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the baseline, so like the, the population size of 32 agents is basically like for one of the methods, they keep like 32 different. Yeah. And, and, and okay, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And finally, they did a combination of these two ablations. Um, so here you can see some of the results. Um, so you can, so the these graphs essentially mean, um, so this is the training strategy of uh, of the agent, and this is with whom they were playing with. So H proxy here is essentially they are playing with another agent that was trained on human data, which they sort of use as a human proxy. Um, and uh, here you can see FCP outperforms all of the others. What's interesting is BCP has the most, um, like the highest error bar for some reason. Um, and then here um, they were playing against uh, diverse self-play agents. Here, um, actually, BCP performs worst, um, and FCP again like the best. And here they were playing with random agents. So this is essentially like um, I don't know, as if you had uh, teammates who who were really bad at the game and didn't know what they were doing. Um, the FCP could still help them and deliver deliver good, a good amount of dishes. And here you can see the results of the ablation study. So what's interesting is that architectural changes didn't really make much of a difference. Right? Um, what made a difference is actually the inclusion of the past checkpoints. So if you didn't, if you don't include them, you will get the worst performance. However, if you do, if you, if you don't include them, architectural changes still make a difference. So having like, so, uh, having some variation, uh, the architecture changes give you some re variation in your agent population, right? So having more variation than no variation, of course, uh, makes it better, but also like it is significant. Whereas um, compared to normal FCP, I mean, the past checkpoints definitely make more of a difference than just architectural changes. And then here you can see the results against uh, uh, with human players. Um, so again, here the um, FCP outperforms the others. Um, here you can also see the comparison between FCP and without with and FCP without the past checkpoints, which actually in essence is just a self-play agent agent then technically. So. <laughs> um, and uh, here you can see that the essentially the participants. Um, preferred the FCP agents over over the other agents as, as their partner players. Mm. Here you can see um, some more results uh, or um, I mean quantitative analysis of what is happening. So they here they measured the speed, uh, the the, uh, the episode episodes where the agents spent, which the agents spent moving. So the FCP agent moved the most, which they sort of took as an estimate for being more collaborative than the other agents. And then um, here they measured if the, if the agents preferred one part over the other. And the FCP didn't really prefer any part, which is more in line of like human behavior, whereas the other agents had a strong preference of one part over the other, which made, made it harder to collaborate with them. So discussion, so I think this is a good showcase how model-free reinforcement learning can outperform model-based reinforcement learning in, a, in this common payoff setting, right? So you don't necessarily need human, like any data to, in order to collaborate with other humans. However, I still have a criticism here is that the other benchmarks, especially PP, uh, population play, which also wasn't using human data and sometimes outperformed even like BCP, um, that they did not include like the past checkpoints there, right? So in an ablation showing like a population play in BCP with like um, past checkpoints would have been interesting for me. And um, what is also interesting is that none of the reviewers really, really had this criticism. 
even though like it was rejected, the paper was re rejected in, in, in one track, but then accepted in another track as a spotlight paper. So yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, 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 like this happens sometimes to papers. I have seen that before. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand it though. Like it's, I mean, like are you you're submitting it to, to two tracks then, and then it happens. Or uh, I, I guess sometimes there's sometimes noise in the reviewers, but I have seen also in paper accepted as a spotlight at ICLR or ICML, which should not have been a spotlight based on the content. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. No. Yeah, any questions or like things for that, that weren't clear? Oh, sorry. Um, for this model based, is this actually separate from the paper? Did they show that it's better than model based? Um, like model free is better than model based? So, uh, sorry, so when I say my model based, I meant, uh, I meant like, uh, so, so that, uh, that is, um, I meant that um, uh, it's better than, then I mean, you could you could like I would see the the BCP as model based reinforcement learning, right? Because you have mm -hmm. a model of, um, I mean, you are using data in as in essence, mm -hmm. right? So I would see that as model, but they are not claiming it to be better than model based. Okay. They're claiming they're essentially claiming that um, um, that it is possible to use to to have agents not train on any data outperforming or like performing well. Uh, so outperforming then uh -huh. outperforming agents that were trained on data, right? Uh -huh. So that 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 is what they're claiming. Yeah, I'm just wondering because technically, I think uh, if you do model based planning, like let's say you know the agent which mm -hmm. is actually the acting one or like you know mm -hmm. the AI collaborator, you would use model based there. Then you mm -hmm. could use the same setup where you have like you assume like a set of, you know, these population trained policies, which you use for the planning process to visual or like imagine what the human will do basically, like sort of like you're trying to model the human basically, um, but yeah. you know, just have different human AI players basically. Um, but that's yep. not what they did, right? They did it completely model free. I mean, FCP is completely model free, but BCP, yeah. right? So BCP, I would consider that. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm wrong yeah. here though, so. I have no idea. So, so BCP is, is, is in <laughs> essence is that the agents um, um, were, were trained on human collected data, right? So they um, so they sort of try to mimic the humans essentially, right? So. Okay, I'm yeah, I'm trying to open the paper quickly. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's a that's a nice statement. I'm not sure if that's that lies within that model based definition, but. Yeah, yeah, I'm but, also wondering, yeah, I guess like maybe I should change the last sentence. I'm also not sure if this counts as model based in the end, but again, like they, all they wanted to show is that um, maybe, maybe I, sh I should, I should maybe change this, this. Um... No, I mean, don't, don't worry. Like, don't, don't, I mean, I totally get what you're, what you're trying yeah, to say. Like, for me, yeah, model but... based, because I do reinforcement learning model based for me is always learned, like, but you know, like if you talk for what is this, you always have to be careful with the model base, but like, mm -hmm. or like you know, define basically a learned model. Um, I think that's what Armin means, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. I was just curious, actually, um, if they said that in the paper, No, no, they, they, they actually, didn't say um, this. I, I just thought like maybe that would make the sentence shorter or something. I don't have to explain that much. No, don't worry. Okay. Don't worry. I'm just like wondering if it's maybe like a point to continue in that paper actually because we are also like i'm not sure if you know like honestly like um in fk we have like these human ai collaboration um mm -hmm. projects basically and this seems like interesting for that one mm. yeah but my main criticism was like even if they wanted to show that you know that um agents don't really need human data to collaborate with humans i'm wondering like, why didn't they for example here population play uh, performs pcp as well right so i'm wondering mm. like how would that go if you included past checkpoints here? Yeah, I mean, also like they only trained it on, on one environment, right? True, true. Which... But it was still accepted as Spotlight, which was, I mean, it was surprising to me, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, like Spotlights are nice and well. The, the probability that the paper accepted from Spotlight is a good paper is high, but there's still a probability that the paper is like, if you at least you know the related literature is not as awesome it's still uh -huh. there um okay but then yeah. okay but then like what do they choose a spot like 
then oh, like it's most likely like the reviewers like you know you basically assign three random reviews to the paper right mm -hmm. as an area editor and then um if the majority of them recommends them for spotlight i would assume that it gets the spotlight um but then again it depends on the reviews we selected and not all the reviewers mm -hmm. are only professors or postdocs um, because mm. sometimes you run out of reviewers basically in your pool yeah and, i was also very surprised that none of the reviewers had this criticism of why okay why don't you include like why don't you do like another oblation where you're including the past mm. checkpoints with mm. mm. Okay. I mean, it's an interesting paper for sure. Um, yeah. I had a feeling we discussed this paper somewhere again, like recently, and I don't remember the points anymore. But I think also like with this, that they only evaluated it like in, on one example, like one, this overcooked thing was like a little bit of drawback. Mm. Yeah, I've also seen several papers using this, uh, or quick uh, as a benchmark. Uh, I mean, it's a nice game. I have never yeah, played, yeah. I got it, but like. <laughs> but is there like some open source framework for, for, for using this? I haven't seen. Yeah, there is. OK. Um, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Should I search like LinkedIn or something? Or... Uh, I guess I can, I can find it in the paper, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, are there any any other questions or comments? I think, if I remember it, when we discussed it, I think it was probably the other reading group. We have this uh, human robot collaboration reading group somewhere in Akai. Uh, I think one of the things which were not really clear is actually how different the policies are, because we have like such a limited action set in this environment. But like, like it was unclear how diverse the policies actually are in the end. I think if it's the same paper, maybe it was also another paper which used overcooked. Um, yeah. I mean, that's more a comment okay, based yeah, on what we have yeah. been discussing there. I mean, apparently, I don't know, like they, I guess they try and try to estimate this by, by seeing like how much the agent moves, right? Like, mm. but. Mm. Okay. Anyone else? I don't, I don't want to take <laughs> I mean, I could continue, sorry, but like. <laughs> okay, so. I think the interesting question is then how to extend it from here to the cases of robotics collaboration, right? Um, or Again? if it's like basically to extend the paper from like the simple game to like a more complex game setup, um, or like even like a real world setup. I'm a bit surprised that the previous checkpoints thing like isn't like you like hasn't been used like for example in Starcraft games or something like I would, I would have assumed like this is a common thing that you do anyways right if you are yeah. playing with other players right that you want to have some different skill levels so yeah I have the feeling maybe it has been used but it has not been like showcased in the sense mm -hmm. like as you know like the 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 big ingredients basically that it's necessary I'm also like a little bit suspicious because like if you do the checkpointing how do you select, how do you select the actually, I'm, I mean, I don't remember when I read the paper, but like, how do you select the checkpoints actually having like a stable policy because sometimes you get pushed off from your perfect parameter or space or like, you know, the, the nice local optimal um, just by chance. I mean, I have a feeling that they just chose like whichever agent performed the best. I mean, they saved like checkpoints until then, right? But they chose like whichever performed the best and then chose the middle version of, of that one right and then, mm. then the first version of that one mm. that's actually for this population they no they didn't use any genetic algorithms anywhere right or like uh evolutionary algorithms mm -mm. no okay because there's this set of evolutionary algorithms actually which is like this um 
nicht, not niching, is it niching? It's like basically you try to find um, multiple optimal solutions, um, which might be actually interesting for these policy cases. Um, so basically you try to find policies which have, for example, different behaviors or like in this set, basically different parameter. <laughs> yeah, it's called quality diversity. Yeah, thank you, right, Josh. That's what I was looking for, quality diversity, yeah. Um, like, I have the feeling this would also like actually maybe help here. Hmm. Because the, the tricky point is basically how the policies will generalize, right? Um, I mean, that's basically the hypothesis they, they work on. It's like that you have different policies which behave optimal given the play. Yeah, okay, you have the second player. Yeah. Okay, anyways, I'm just loudly thinking. <laughs> Okay, I think I think I'm I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I, I have a doubt. Like uh, in the paper, since they're using um, like checkpoints of the agent, so uh, how uh, they can guarantee that uh, that distribution of those checkpoints will represent actual, let's say, human behavior because human behavior can yeah, be yeah they they really didn't different. Uh, they didn't do that so they didn't. Yeah, they, they didn't estimate that. So, I mean, they only estimated, like, uh, in terms of human behavior, where, where they sort of checked, like, um, for example, if one cooking pot was used over another or something. But theoretically, theoretically I mean, you could, like, use some, you, theoretically, you could, right? You could uh, take some statistics, right? For example, if, like, if, I mean, one of them statistics could be that they use, like, um, pre preference of one pot over the other, but also maybe, um, I don't know, some preference over certain paths or, you know, that sort, um, preference over certain symmetry breaking conventions. So you could take some statistics and compare them against human behavior and see what happens or like see what, what the result is, but they didn't really do that for the past checkpoints. So yeah. And also like, how skilled players versus non-skilled players behave. It's also something that they didn't do. Yeah, I think they discussed that, right? But like, I don't see if they actually evaluated it. No, they didn't evaluate it. That's a pity. Yeah, for me, the title of the paper is a bit confusing because without using any human data or any human information or anything, like how can you like uh, like train a model, uh, train a train an agent that can collaborate with human? Because human behavior can be really different. You have to have some assumptions or yeah, but I have mean, some that, at least data. They, they they did that though, right? With with FCP, right? So they did show that it that it it can outperform the baseline, which was like trained on human data right so using this pa these past checks yeah they, they showed it for this particular yeah uh, for this game, for this right but yeah. it's like uh, it's uh yeah it's uh, for me it's like hard to justify the point that okay the experiment wise it's showing like okay it's mm. uh, working fine or it's working better yeah but, yeah but yeah human behaves like human can behave very differently than those agents you yeah through uh, but but i think but i think a problem of this is also that there aren't a lot of um base, i mean there aren't a lot of common payoff games that where, where two players have to collaborate that are open sourced or that are mm -hmm. yeah. so that is that is a problem yeah it's hard to test also <laughs> yeah i'm thinking you could probably have some driving game or so but I'm not sure what a collaboration would be. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, not kill each other or something. <laughs> and then you're back at like, oh, uh, AI is going to kill humans. <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh, okay, cool.
yeah i think like probably like it's it's inter would be interesting to see how it scales up to other games and other scenarios um i mean starcraft would be probably like the obvious choice but yeah but starcraft yeah. isn't so they're they're arguing that uh i mean starcraft isn't a common payoff green game right they're yeah. they're competing against each other so they're i'm not sure if yeah Actually, yeah, yeah. no, the, it, it would out, like, I mean, I, I think, I think AlphaGo on that sort, like, didn't they essentially use um, only self-play, right, or? I think, yeah, I think the self-play, yeah. I mean, at least it's like usually something used to push uh, the performance, like they did it definitely for the chess part, mm -hmm. and I have to think they would do the same for StarCraft, I mean, without yeah. remembering the paper right now. Mm. Yeah, cool. Uh, okay, so thank you very much, everyone, and especially uh, Mashaba for the great presentation and the great discussion. So hopefully we'll meet again uh, in two weeks. Yeah, have a nice day. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Yeah, this was at least like a really good, really good paper selection. I think. Um, like we have, we have currently like some groups actually in FK who are trying to work with human data and imitating human basically. And I think that's like one of the good papers to take with back to these discussions basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you can include past checkpoints there as well and see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, basically at least like I mean, uh, checkpointing the human, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, there are some ideas for extension here, I think. Um, at least these population-based approaches. I'm always like a little bit, uh, like it always tickles me by the gate like to, to apply evolutionary algorithms to these cases. Yeah, from, uh, from quality diversity the algorithm perspective, uh, what they could do, so in quality diversity, they will learn that they would learn a behavior space of the human behaviors, and then they would try to find out different policies uh, to, um, uh, like uh, uh, different optimal policies in that behavior space to yeah. be sure that okay that it's the, the, those policies are or those agents are representing the actual distribution of human behavior and then they would train like yeah that's the approach uh, of uh, quality diversity uh, uh, algorithms so this is but it's hard to do it's hard to learn the uh, behavior yeah. space of human so you need lots of data and then it depends how you define that behavior space. So this is DeepMind, right? I didn't publish the code. Yeah, this is DeepMind, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the backstory is like, DeepMind usually it takes like, like the code, if they would publish it, it wouldn't run anyways because on their infrastructure, like it's so specified or like specialized basically that it doesn't work outside. Mm. It's just like awful then. Uh, usually if you want to rerun their experiments. I also don't understand, like, why didn't they just use the publicly available overcooked? They did a re-implementation of the oh. whole thing. And also re-implementation of BCP. Yeah, I mean, the re-implementation of BCP sometimes, yeah, I mean, sometimes... Yeah, but that one was also yeah. public. Like, yeah. the whole... <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes I can understand if you have to re-implement something because sometimes the open source version is like crap. Uh, like if the PCP is actually from the authors, then it should be at least be like in, in good state. But I also didn't publish their version of PCP, right? Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. When did this came out? 2021. I mean, then it should have been off by now. If they plan to publish it. Okay, I have to leave now. I have to jump to another meeting. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay. have a nice bye. weekend. Yeah, you too. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah, bye. 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 bye.